us play one more? Yes. <laughs> we could do one more. He's gonna do one more. He's gonna he's gonna close it out. He's out of this system. I'll go first and he goes he ends up here. Good. I'm glad you let everybody in on that. Now they know our secrets. <laughs> Um, thanks for uh, paying such close attention for me and so attentive to us. I usually pay, play, I usually pay. <laughs> I usually play in bars in New York City. And uh, it's nice. You guys are quiet. It's either a really good thing or a really bad thing. I'm going to say it's a kind of okay thing. <laughs> this is the first song I wrote. It's called Hospital. Um, I told the story when I met Jamie, um, which it's been an insane two weeks. <laughs> Jamie wrote that blog in my MySpace that usually has like, I don't know, 40 to 80 hits on it a day, like plays of songs. It had 5,000 in one day. So I was like, who's this man? <laughs> so I called him and I was like, who are you? <laughs> and it was good, it went well. <laughs> so now I'm here. Um, but, uh, but four years ago, um, I was living in West Palm Beach, Florida, and my wife and I were with a bunch of our friends who actually live in the city with us now. <clears throat> and the hurricanes came, and we needed to, to get away from the hurricane, so we went up to my parents' horse ranch in this little town called Kennesaw, Georgia. And, uh, and we were riding horses, and my, my wife had an accident. I remember it was a very strange day. Um, and I remember the horse coming back with no one on it, no one screaming, no one crying, nothing like that. And my best friend Caleb was with me, and, and we I remember running the fence together and being able to see him in my peripheral. And just we're running through this really tall grass looking for her, and we find her. And she was unconscious, you know. Um, And it was like two days before that, I was uh, playing music, playing worship music for my college down in Palm Beach. And, um, and I read this song that says, um, the Lord is our refuge and strength, very present help in a time of trouble. And it just hit me, you know, like a ton of bricks while my wife was unconscious. And, um, and she woke up and she said, I can't, you know, I can't move. And went into shock after that. We went to the hospital, and, and the doctor said, you know, she's broke. She's broke her, her neck. She broke C1, C3, C5, C6 on the vertebrae. And she, you know, he said, we're going to do this surgery so that she can breathe on her own. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, uh, she's a quadriplegic. I met my wife when I was 12. Um, it's one of those really lame childhood stories where... I was madly in love with her, and she was really conniving, and, <laughs> and, and it just went on and on for years. Um, so I was just thinking about this love, this, this love of my entire life, not being able to move. And she didn't know about it yet because she was still um, unconscious. And she had the surgery, and she, she woke up, and we told her, and I was thinking, this is going to be a terrible experience. And, you know, she had that halo on where they had drilled the holes in her head. And, um, she was still beautiful, though. And uh, <clears throat> you know, I told her what the doctor told me to tell her because he said that you don't always want to just tell her the outright facts. She said, you know, what you're telling me is that I'm not going to be able to move. And she said, well, maybe this is just God's plan for me. I always knew that something was out there. And weeks went by, um, you know, and nothing changed. And we went to three different hospitals. And, um, and small miracles started happening with, my, with my, my friends that were coming and visiting me in the, uh, in the waiting room. Um, and they would just come and sit with me just in awkward silence, you know, with nothing to say. Um, but I could feel them. You know, I could feel their love for me. I could feel them reaching out to me. 
even though I was hurting and even though there was probably plenty of more fun things to do than come and sit with me in that waiting room. And, uh, and I just remember this, this overwhelming feeling of, of, of being loved, of being cared for um, in a way that was beyond words. Um, and, uh, and one day she, you know, she moved her hand one day while she was telling a story and we all freaked out. And uh, the doctor came in, like re-examined and was like, okay, well, we might have been wrong. She's, she's paralyzed. She's just waist down. And by that time, I was like, whatever. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Um, and then it was like two weeks later that she, she stood up and, uh, you know, screaming, crying because of the nerves were so shot in her back. With it. And the doctor, um, you know, the neurosurgeon just said, we see this all the time. This is a miracle. These, these things happen. And have a good day. And I was like, <laughs> you don't want to talk about this more? And um, but what I walked away with from this whole experience was, was a sense of community that I had never experienced before. <coughs> People that, that would just sit in silence with me for, for days. Um, and I wrote this song. I, it's the first song I wrote. I wrote it while Stacy was in the hospital. And... Um, I was going through this hard time of just trying to figure out what to say to her, just to, just to love her, you know, um, and just so we could leave. Um, so this is a song called Hospital. 